Okay, the work for this week is Sakaguchi Ango's uh, Hakuchi, The Idiot, published in uh, 1946. So, uh, written right at the end of the war and published uh, shortly after Japan's surrender in 1945. Um, we taught this work, uh, I taught this work a few years ago uh, when it looked like America was about to invade um, or launch a preemptive strike against uh, North Korea and thereby initiate nuclear war. So, we are all all of the students and myself included were uh, very uh, traumatized by that period and we read this work right in the, at the height of that so it kind of made things even worse. So um, in times of war or potential war it's not a good uh, idea to read this work which is very disturbing uh, work. Um, Sakaguchi Ango we've already read. I did a video on um, his work in the forest of um, in the what is it in the forest under cherry trees we've read that and I introduced him in that video so no need to uh, rehash all of that Sakaguchi Ango born in 1906 died in 1955 so just 10 years after the war he died um, he's associated with the Budaiha right the libertine or the decadent group or whatever they're called Dazai um, Osama Ishikajun Sakaguchi Oda Saku Nosuke are associated with that group. Okay, so for more information about the author, look at the previous study guide or um, look online. There's all kinds of information. Uh, for this class, we want to focus on the texts themselves rather than uh, think about the author too much. Okay, but for this work, of course, it's very important to understand the historical context, which is the end of the war, Japan's defeat, the uh, fire bombings of 1945. I think the fire bombings began in 44, if I'm not mistaken, and they culminated in 1945. The famous 19 or March 10th bombing of fire bombing of Tokyo by the U.S. Uh, airplanes uh, killed 100,000 civilians in one night. So the bombings were atrocious. Obviously, it culminated with the uh, atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end the war in August. Okay, so it's the historical context. Keep that all in mind, of course, when you read this work. Okay. Now I'm going to run through the questions. I think we have how many? We have eight in all, not too many, but questions that make you think hard and read the text very closely. So um, pay attention to all of these things that I'm going to, to explain here. Okay, number one, describe the point of view, the focalization point, the tone, uses of interior monologue, all right, so naimin dokuhaku, the technique that I've already discussed. Uh, and the various literary te techniques used in this work, some of which are consciously modernistic and experimental. Okay, so this the content of the story, of course, is interesting, but it's also interesting to uh, note what he does on a formal level, right, and a stylistic level, and a narrative level. Okay, um, interior monologue, focalization points. Yes, are there any flashbacks? And the fancy word for flashbacks is analepsis. Or are there any flash forwards, prolepsis? Okay. Or is the story told chrono chronologically? Okay. So keep in mind how time progresses in the narrative. What I novel, what actually shows its autobiographical elements do you detect in the work? Right. Is this can this work be read as a what actually shows its in your view? Explain. Okay. So that's a basic question about the narrative elements of the work. Number two, discuss the setting. Okay. As described in the first few pages, okay. For example, the people, the, their environment, their state of living, moral condition, historical circumstances. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, the, the first few pages describe the uh, residents of that area uh, in very animalistic, feral terms, right? Okay, is the war the main in, in fallen terms? And the word fallen, daraku, fallenness, right, is a very is a key word in. Uh, the works of Sakaguchi Ango. He wrote, wrote his famous essay, Darakurong, after the war. <coughs> so this idea of fallenness is very central to his work. What is he suggesting by describing these people in fallen, uh, in a fallen condition? All right. Is the war the main cause, in his view, in the narrative's view, for their fallenness, or is something else to the cause? Okay. Is he perhaps hinting at something like original sin, the doctrine of original sin? Why do you think Sakaguchi goes into such detail <laughs> in these opening pages before the main plot line begins? Okay, so the main plot doesn't begin till page six or seven, if I <laughs> remember correctly. But um, this introduction is very long, and why does he include this long introduction? 
Okay, number three. Who are the so-called Braiha writers? Okay, this is a <coughs> general question about the um, sort of literary context that you need to know. What are the characteristics of this group? Donald Keene, the famous um, uh, Japanese literature um, scholar and translator who recently died two years ago, I think. Donald Keene describes their writing as sometimes farcical and sometimes nihilistic. What is farcical or nihilistic about Sakaguchi's works in general in this story particularly? How does the theme of daraku, fallenness, moral or social degradation appear in this story? Explain. Okay, so that kind of relates to one of the other questions, but you can extend on your answer for that other question, expand on your answer for that other question. Number four, numerous binary oppositions appear in the work. Make a list of all the oppositions, okay? So this is something I always say, or not always, but in, in works in which uh, binary oppositions are particularly prevalent, I always make students make a list of them. And then in each binary, which opposite has a positive valence? Okay, which is the good one in the pair? And which has a negative valence? For example, positive individual versus the negative the herd appears in the, in the first ten pages of the work, right? And the narrator contrasts the main character with the herd, okay, the good individual against the negative, the herd. Or another binary that appears in the work is niktai, flesh, right, or material, human uh, bodies, right, nikutai, meat, literally, meat bodies, carnal bodies, is positive in the work versus negative, koktai, niktai, koktai, both of them have the kanji for tai, karada in their names, right? But niktai is described in positive terms, koktai, or the um, the state, right? The country, the nation state, the polity, I think it's translated as, uh, is negative. Another is animal versus human. Animal is, for some reason, good in this text, in contrast with human, which is corrupted and degraded and so forth. Okay, there are many, many other binary oppositions that appear in this work. Make a list of all of them, describe them, and note which is, has a positive valence and which has a negative valence. Okay, number five. Uh, Sakaguchi Ango, this is a significant fact about his life, studied Eastern and Indian philosophy while an undergrad at Toyo University in the 1920s. Buddhist elements and ideas frequently appear in his works. I think we saw it in, a, the, in the forest under cherry trees in Full Blossom story, right? The idea of koku or nothingness or mu appeared in that work, right? He's, koku is what he felt when he uh, sat under the cherry trees in full bloom at the end of the story. Can you identify any Buddhist elements or ideas in this work? Explain. And I, I give you a hint there, nothingness, emptiness, absolute solitude, the idea of shu chakra or attachment, all figure into this work, okay? So there's kind of underlining Buddhist themes and Buddhist ideas that run through it, identify them and explain them is the question. Number six, Discuss Izaba, the main character of this, the protagonist of this story. His job, what is his job, what is his worldview? How does he view himself? How does he view himself vis-a-vis -vis others? Uh, what are his circumstances at the end of the war, right? What does he do for a living and so forth? Daily concerns, his view of art, his attitude toward the war. What is his attitude the, toward the, the woman, the Hakuchi, woman that he finds, right? Okay. And that leads us to number seven, which is describe the Hakuchi, the feeble-minded woman. What metaphors, similes are used to describe her? Okay, so whenever he describes her, he uses uh, certain similes and metaphors. Is she, for, for the uh, Izaba, is she a symbol for something? If so, what is she a symbol for? Explain. Okay. Another uh, thing you could tack on to that is, does she, uh, do we ever get access to her directly, or is everything we know about this female character filtered through the um, somewhat warped lens of Izawa? Right. Okay, number eight. Sakaguchi's description of the 1945 Tokyo fire bombings, the Tokyo Daikushu, Daikushu is a word in Japanese, is one of the best descriptions of urban aerial bombardment in all modern literature. Okay. Donald Keene has said that there are, quote, few comparable accounts of what it meant both physically and spiritually 
to live through the bombing of Tokyo in 1945. Okay. That's in his uh, History of Modern Japanese Literature on page 1078. Discuss the firebombing scene. Discuss its effects. And discuss Izawa's response to it. What literary techniques does the narrator use to convey the experience? Okay. So that's a question specifically about the firebombing and its representation in this story. My good friend Justin is a, a scholar, a historian, who specializes in the firebombings of Tokyo. So he will be particularly interested in this question. Number nine, um, discuss the ending. Okay, Why does Saguchi refer to the destructiveness of war, in quotes, as a, quote, gigantic love? which would pass impartial judgment upon everything. Okay, so that's a rather peculiar way to describe this horrendous war that he's lived through. He describes it in kind of positive terms. The destructiveness of war is a gigantic love. Usually war is considered the opposite of love, right? Why is he considered in a, 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 the, op, the gigantic love that passes impartial judgment upon everything? What do you think will happen to Izawa and the woman after the war ends? Write a short sequel to the story. Okay, so using all the evidence from the story, everything you know about their relationship, these and these two characters, Izawa and the woman, uh, how do you think the story concludes? Do they stay together? Do they part? What happens to them after the war? Okay. So that last question involves some conjecture and surmise, but um, use your imagination and uh, write a little maybe a paragraph um, synopsis of what you think happens to them after the war, okay? That is all for the study guide for Sakaguchi Ango's Hakuchi, the idiot. Um, you have the original too. It's fairly difficult to read in the original and uh, many of my Japanese students struggled with it a few years ago, but um, at least look at it and uh, if you're a foreign student, look at it. If you're a Japanese student, um, read the English translation in tandem with the um, original. Okay, if you have any questions, send me an email. That is all. Bye-bye.